end of the year. We need to do our vision board. We do? Yeah. Excellent. Well, I'm excited for it. So this year is the year of the Lord's favor. Amen. All right. So we have five categories that we're going to cover, right? And we have worked on some of them, but there's one that is still pending. So it's your work goals. What do you have in mind? Interesting you mentioned that. I've been thinking a lot about it, and I'm going to be very bold. It's the year okay. of the God's favor, as I you like said. That. I like that. So I want a country manager position Ooh. or a global director position that's going to be bold and exciting and challenging for my Fantastic. Opinion. Let's do that. Let's put it in our pray. vision board and let's pray about it. Okay. All right. Thank you, Jesus, because you're meeting our needs and our goals. Amen. All right. Uh -huh. No. January. 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 Hold on one second. We're having technical issues. <laughs> Still in January 2021, please. So just for you to have an idea, that was January 2021. <laughs> context, give us context. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Go ahead. Just okay, right. January 2021. Then Here comes December 2021. Honey, I got some exciting news before the year ends. Tell me all about it, I wanna hear it. I've been getting recruited for a global director position. So it looks like God is fulfilling some of our prayers. That's amazing news. I love that. I know. I guess we should pray about it again. Yes, let's pray about it. Let's stand in agreement. Excellent. January 2022. Honey, I got more exciting news. All right. I'm in the final round after six rounds for that global director position and that multinational I told you about. Well, it's again that time of the year where we need to do our vision board and write down our goals. So what do you want to uh, actually get this year, like in your work? Well, this is the year of... It's going to be a bountiful, bountiful year. year. Excellent. Right. Awesome. So this year I'm going to be even bolder than last okay. year. Okay. This year I still declare that I want that country manager goal director position. Right. And I want to triple my salary. Woo, I like that. More shoes in my closet. <laughs> yeah. Well, February, early February 2022. All right. How do I say this to my wife? Well, honey, I have some uh, exciting news. Okay, did you get the job? Yes. How come you're not happy? What's happening? There is a little caveat to the job. And what is it? Well, uh, we have to move. To Paris? <laughs> New York? Miami? Tell me! Oh God, give me some grace. <laughs> Arkansas. What? <laughs> Arkansas? <laughs> no, honey, it's Arkansas. I don't care. Whatever. I am not moving to Arkansas. Well, we talked about this. We prayed about it. Well, Luis, I don't know. You figure it out. <laughs> okay, so um, my name is Claudia. And I am Luis. And we are Colombian paid soap opera actors. <laughs> We're joking. <laughs> we are former teachers um, on the Saturday night class. We used to teach with Jeff and Michelle. And this is our first time here Sunday morning. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. And as Jeff mentioned, thank you for inviting us. It's amazing to be here, being back on stage. And we're teaching about honor and respect today as the topic sets it. Right. So, so honey, you want to get us started? Yeah, so let's talk about honor. Honor. Hold on one second. Okay, so I so I wanna ask the audience, we like to engage with the people. So what do you think is honor? Can you someone give me a brief description of what honor is? Anyone? I respect great esteem. You gave him a cheat. <laughs> All right. Figuring out how to serve your spouse and, and meet their needs. Right. Okay. So 
We looked in the dictionary and honor is high respect, great esteem, fulfill an obligation or keep an agreement, adhere to what is right or to a conventional standard of conduct. So, you know, you see what we were, we, we were having this little play here. And what do you think it happened? How did I not honor my husband when I said, you figure it out? Anyone? You cut him running. Huh? You, you downloaded, you cut him running. Right, exactly. And not only that, I, we agreed on something, right? We were praying about it. We were standing in agreement. And then when I didn't see things coming to pass the way I wanted to, I just dropped the ball on him. I didn't honor him. So basically the Bible says clearly that we are to honor everyone. And that means your wife and your husband, whether you want to or not. And not just those we feel deserve to be honored. So basically, honor is a commandment. It's not a feeling. It's not something that I feel like honoring my husband today. So we have to honor our husbands. Honey, why don't you tell them about what happened. So this was early February when this news and the whole skit happened. Well, so right. the story is true. We were making a play, but it's true. It is true. <laughs> and, 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 and there's some folks in the audience today that we then went to a marriage retreat right. uh, in Cancun that was somewhat revealing. There. Why don't you tell them about what happened after the retreat? I'm just happy to be here alive because I don't know how my husband didn't drop me in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> so I could be eaten by sharks. We could thank Pastor Clayton for that. Yes, thank you, Pastor Clayton. <laughs> Pastor Ashley. So, but anyways, during that time, which I highly recommend because I know you guys are having another one, but like, and if you have the opportunity, please sign up. But during that time, even though we were in this couple's retreat, and we were praying and doing activities and stuff, I still didn't have my mind at ease. Now, after the retreat, I got home and then I had to ask for another two days. I went up to my, my boss and I said, I'm not feeling good, I need to actually have an extra two days. So I went into my room and I locked myself and I said, I am not gonna get out of this room until I get a revelation from you, God. And I pray and pray and pray. And he took me to Genesis. Now I'm gonna give you my version of the Bible. This is Claudia NIV. <laughs> <laughs> he took me to Genesis, right? To um, Abraham, where he received that promise from God. And God told him that he was gonna be, gonna be the father of all nations, right? Now, I, Abraham didn't see how that was gonna happen because Sarah, she was sterile, right? She couldn't have kids. But then Abraham kept believing that God was gonna do what he promised. So one day, Sarah got pregnant, but she gets pregnant, she's 90 something years old, and they have Isaac, right? And they're enjoying their promise, they're finally seeing their promise coming to pass, and one day, the angel of the Lord shows up and says, hey, I want you to sacrifice Isaac. And Abraham didn't doubt for a second. He was like, okay. He took his kid and God said to him, I am the God that gives and takes away. So this son didn't belong to Sarah or Abraham. It belonged to God. And after I received that revelation, I was like, okay, so just to give you a context, a few months ago, I received my dream job. I was named team leader. I was named treasurer for a national association of real estate agents. So I was living my best life. <laughs> that was my promise. I had prayed like Abraham. God had given me a promise. I landed my promise. And now God was telling me, give it back to me. And I was just like, okay, this is a good revelation. This job did, doesn't belong to me. This job belongs to God. And if he, if he is asking me to give it back, my job is to give it back. 
So I got out of that room after two days and I said to my husband, let's pack, let's go to Arkansas. <laughs> let's look for a house. <laughs> what my wife is mentioning here is a story of revelation, of course. Yes. But I think part of the story, which you're probably hearing her first initial emotion reaction was, and, and she agreed, was of selfishness, was of yeah. potentially fear, right? She's gotten everything she wanted, but in that moment, she, I felt disrespected. I felt that she didn't honor the commitment that we have as husband and wife, because we were praying about it. And, and there was moments, I remember in Cancun, at one night telling her, almost very upset, why in the world that we pray for this? I am calling them and saying, I'm not going because I can keep up with all these emotions that moment and I feel that this is not the honorable thing for me. And that leads us to what is respect, right? Because we talk that there's this word is constantly used in the world we live on, be respectful. We go back to the dictionary uh, definition of it and it's just a feeling of deep admiration for someone or something elicited by their abilities qualities or achievements but when we take it to the Bible there is a lot of aspect to talk about respect or honor we just grab one two concepts of it and in the Bible we learn that it is firstly God who respects men since we all of us here are precious and honor in his sight and because he loves us. If man thus opens up to God, as we did in prayer and being bold, he always receives, we always receive his reverence because his respect in the permanent state of God. Yeah. We have been praying in agreement for several years. And because we've done that, we have seen God's miraculous blessings. We open up to him and he gave us this. So in that moment, as a husband, I felt disrespected. But what did my wife feel? Because this is not about me. Whenever I got the job and moving to a place that it is unknown to her, she felt probably unloved and unsecure by me. Hence, touching up upon her honor. We as humans, we as couples, women live in love and security. We live in honor and respect but they are both correlated with one another. Yes. So as a result, that is how she felt. And I can't blame her because I mean, I'm taking her away from this comfort zone and this revelation that God was giving her. In the moment I felt and she said, you go and figure it out. That was tough, right? The first thing I wanted to react was, you go and figure it out. I thought we were a team. Teams don't figure it out individually. This is not tennis. This, this is doubles. You know, we have to play together, and that's the way I have seen it. So the devil started playing with my head, right? Because that's the first thing he does, attacks us. And how he attacked me was with my pride and with my ego. Because my first reaction as a man is like, okay, I'll figure it out. Okay, good, I'll figure it out. And as we started talking, you know, I didn't want to be selfish enough and take away everything God was doing with her. I wanted to honor that. And I was just going and say, well, we, yeah, I mean, I guess I could travel twice a month and we'll try to figure it out. And she's like, okay, that kind of works. But as we think about the marriage and this beautiful commitment that we both made to each other, God didn't make us to be alone. Yeah. He made us to be one, one flesh. That's how he united us. And we are much stronger together than we are individually. As the devil started playing with my pride and my ego, I needed to remind myself of what God has been doing over the years with my wife and I. And this was God's promise because I've been asking for over 18 months and I got that dream job because he did fulfill that global director position. He did fulfill triplicating my my salary, or not triplicating, tripling my salary. Triplicating would be in Spanish almost. <laughs> it's tough to start translating languages in my head. If you don't understand, you can always put your closed captions on. So what is, <laughs> when we talk about pride or ego, I have been able to put all an acronym hip of what ego stands for. Extinguishes great opportunities. 
if I let my ego come into play into this marriage, first and foremost, I wouldn't be honoring and respecting my wife. But we start going into a crazy cycle that if I don't feel honored and respected by her, then I start going into pride and ego, and then I start going into not honoring and respecting her, and we go through this crazy cycle that the devil wants to be with. I needed to reflect on what ego stand. And was I going to let the devil help me extinguish a great opportunity with my wife because of, she said, figure it out? No. I needed to go back in prayer and submit myself as well to God. There was one time that I remember Gary Chapman talked about it. He said, sometimes when we don't feel honored and respected, and there's husbands, there was a story that he, this husband got into a fight with the wife. And one of the first reaction is we walk away, we storm out, we give them the cold shoulder, you know, we, we don't text back or we send the text back the next morning without an emoji and we just put okay. You know, I think we all have been through those moments, but rather this husband, and that was a big teaching lesson, he went back into his office and all he started to do was writing all the reasons why he loved his wife. And as the son came in and said, I just heard you guys fight. What are you doing, dad? And the husband replied, son, I am writing all the reasons why I love your wife. Oh, your mother. Your wife. Why I love your mother. Why I love my wife. That was a big impact reflection for our kids. And we should also be a vessel, not only for us, because the enemy's not behind us. The enemy's behind our children. Okay? So, this, guys, we have to be able to continue to honor the commitment we both made to one another. And that commitment initially was our marriage. But again, it was the commitment of prayer, and we did that specifically. So, Walt Disney, I know we're not, we're, we're a church, and hopefully I can Bible. talk about, it's not in the Bible. No? Walt Disney's not no? in the Bible? Okay. No, I don't think it's in the Bible. <laughs> but I thought this quote was great, because Walt Disney once said, the way to get started is to quit talking, but start doing. And sometimes, we quit ourselves out of our destiny by talking away from it rather than us start having actions. And what are some of the actions? My wife praying, honoring some of the God's word, me taking back and saying, well, I'm gonna let my pride and my ego take over. Why, honey, why don't you tell them about, you know, what happens when we let fear and we are yeah. not committed by faith? So we, we actually heard this um, theory, which I really love, in a um, sermon from Michael Tom. And so he was, thought, he was um, teaching about fear and faith. And so usually, one side you have fear, and in the other side you have faith, right? You can either have fear or have faith. You cannot have both, right? Now usually, the devil operates in our fear, because this is where we struggle, right? We don't give the step of faith because we are scared we fear what's coming ahead in our future so in the middle right in the middle you have optimism i like to call it hope right so from fear to hope is just one thought it's one day one day i'm gonna be healthy one day i'm gonna restore my marriage one day i'm gonna take this class one day it's just a thought right but from hope to faith, which is our promised land, what we want to see coming true, right? That's where 95% of the people fail. And do you know why? Because it requires work. And most people are not willing to put on the work. Most people are not willing to come to class to see their marriage restored. Most people are not willing to read that book that is gonna take you to the next level. Most people are not willing to do the diet so they can lose weight. So isn't that incredible? Faith is the things that we hope for, but we have not yet seen. If we are gonna walk in faith, we have to take one step, and then another step, and then another step. And I will tell you this, 
God will give you the grace to find you in the middle, but then you have to put in the work. Why am I teaching this? Or why am I saying this? I don't see what's coming ahead. To be honest, we're two Latinos moving to Arkansas. <laughs> Think about it, right? Yeah, I don't see what's, what's gonna happen in the future, but we're putting on the work. We're believing God, Amen. and we're taking little steps. Am I gonna operate in fear? No, I will not settle for that. I haven't come this far to stay here in fear. Fear is of the devil. Fear, the definition of fear is false evidence appearing real. That's what fear is. I'm gonna operate in faith, even if I don't see it. We sing it all the time. Even if I don't see it, you're working. God is working in the middle of the things that you don't see. Don't stay in hope. Don't stay in one day. Just keep walking. Keep walking. You're going to find God in the middle of it. Right? Beautiful. You want to add something else? That's good. <laughs> Preaching good. <laughs> but how do we continue to attach this to honor and respect? Because yes. right? at the end, this is the topic of today's class. As I mentioned earlier, we husbands live in honor and respect. Our challenge for this morning for all of you is to continue to honor and respect one another. Sometimes it's difficult, especially when the storm comes, when we are operating that area of selfishness, pride of ego or fear. But we must constantly do what is right for one another. There is days here that I guarantee that each one of us, there's little things that we don't want to do for our husbands or wives. Right? There's moments that we feel that way, unfortunately. But we gotta continue to push. We gotta continue to do what's honorable for them. Because as the definition of the Bible said in the beginning, honor, we are to give it to everyone, even when we feel that they don't deserve it. And there is moments that my wife doesn't deserve it. To be honest. I had to tell you about me. And I there's tons of moments, ten times more that I don't deserve her from her. Because by all means, I have screwed up. There's moments that I do, which is why in the morning, we have gone to commit to prayer to one another. And one of the things I say to her is, I forgive you today for whatever's gonna happen and please forgive me for whatever I'm gonna do today. And she has to look at me and said, what do you mean I'm forgive me? I haven't done anything. We just woken up and I said, well, but you're gonna do something today that's gonna accept me, disrespect me, or not give me any honor. By all means, and I do the same. But when we start with a prayer like that to one another, just think about how it would make you feel as a husband or a wife. It would now play into love and security for her as well, which ultimately is also where she lands, where she seeks. If I wouldn't have allowed myself to go to the dark zone and be in fear and selfishness with her, I guarantee you the Lord wouldn't have us right now on this stage. Yeah. To make the story even more compelling, whenever my wife and I decided to recommit to one another, and I tell you ladies and gentlemen, it hasn't been easy. It has not been easy. It's been an emotional roller coaster. Yes. Big time, big time. Why? We have built a beautiful home here in Houston. We come to the best church with the best friends that anyone can ask. Thank you guys. And it's tough. Separated from friends, family, our home, but that's, it shouldn't be a sad story because by us honoring and respecting one another, we went to Northwest Arkansas where we're moving and in one weekend, we found a house where there is an 18 month wait list to get a house in Northwest Arkansas at this time. Our house is bigger and nicer and better than we have ever dreamed of. When my wife surrendered her job, thinking it was her dream job, 
We didn't know what God was having in store for her. As she went on that weekend, she landed a job with the top relocation team in the state in a day. And the fulfillment of God's promises continued to just flow. And we prayed in January and we declared pastor's words every single day in our lives. This is going to be a bountiful year. Amen. And God is giving us a very bountiful year with an emotional roller coaster. But God never said it was going to be easy. We don't know what's coming up ahead. We don't know if we're going to have to buy several cows. <laughs> Maybe that's what people in Arkansas do. <laughs> Especially driving from the airport. That's all you see getting to the small town. Uh, but we don't know what's coming. But all we know is that we got to continue to fulfill God's promises. That is the two of us together. And as we continue to honor, love, and respect one another, which is what we challenge you all, you don't know what God has in store for you. Yeah. But we must deliver ourselves from fear. We must deliver ourselves from selfishness from pride, from ego. Do not let great opportunities be extinguished by putting yourself first. Amen. Put each other first. 100%. So I want to close this with um, Matthew 19, 16 through the 21. Um, so as you heard, we had, this is a season in our lives where God has asked us to surrender pretty much everything. We had my parents with us for 16 years, and that was the first thing that God asked us to be. So my dad went through a cancer treatment last year, and it was very hard for me to let them go because um, they couldn't actually move with us to Arkansas. Um, the plane, actually, the plane, the, the seatings were not proper for my my dad after he had after he had surgery. And that was the first thing that God asked me to surrender. Second thing was my house, which Luis already mentioned. Third thing he asked me to surrender was my church. <laughs> Fourth thing he asked me was my daughter as she's moving to Boston because she just graduated from high school. And the fifth thing is our ministry here. So I said, I was talking to my daughter the other day and I said, I'm overwhelmed. God is asking me to surrender everything in just one thing. Like, it's not, you know, progressive, it's just boom. And she said, Mommy, do you remember the story in the Bible? Matthew, so I'm going to read it to you guys. It says, Just then a man came up to Jesus and asked, Teacher, what good thing must I do to get eternal life? We're going to jump to 17. Why do you ask me about what is good? Jesus replied, There's only one who is good. If you want to enter life, keep the commandments. And that takes me to honoring my husband and honoring what God has given me. Because we talked about honor is not a feeling, it's a commandment. And then finally, if you want to be perfect, go sell your possessions, give it to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. So this is not a story about following my husband. This is a story about following Jesus. This is a story about working for our eternity. This is a story about our legacy. This is a story about obedience. Amen. We are following Jesus. So I'm going to ask you guys, if you don't mind, there was a worship song that God put in my heart. If you don't mind joining us as we close this class, 
and we worship together. Would you mind standing up? Thank you. I want you guys to do at this moment husbands grab your wife and look at them please and I want you to tell them this my beautiful and amazing wife I vow and declare that I will continue to honor you love you and respect you despite the circumstances despite what the enemy wants to do in our lives we are not to live in fear. We are not to live in selfishness. And we would not let our ego interfere in our marriage. We are committed to one another. And I have decided to continue to follow you, but most importantly, our Father, Jesus. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you very much for, for listening to us and bearing with us. And have a great Sunday.